Welcome to this week's weekly update. In the last week, we here at IdahoReporter.com have covered several interesting issues. We start this week with the liquor division. As most of you probably know, liquor stores in Idaho are owned and operated by the state, not private owners. This has caused some controversy as free market advocates believe the state shouldn't compete against the private sector. In this case, they aren't really competing at all. They are shutting the private sector out. The liquor division, however, is making a case for itself as well. Go into any liquor store and you'll find a brochure promoting the idea of state-run liquor stores with the tagline, quote, owned by the citizens and operated to benefit all Idahoans, end quote. Roy Ugarin, lobbyist for Northwest Grocers Association, says a pamphlet is inappropriate for a state agency considering taxpayer dollars are used to fund the advocacy of a state-owned system versus a privately run industry. The Idaho Travel Council. Ever heard of it? Chances are, probably not. Earlier this month, it awarded grants of just over $3.2 million to 28 applicants to promote tourism. The money comes from a 2% tax on the sale of hotels, motels, and private campground accommodations. The council, made up of eight private sector members appointed by the governor, hears proposals from different prospective grantees and then decides which ones will get the money. This year, the Division of Tourism is hoping to bring in around $7 million from the 2% tax. Karen Ballard, administrator for the Division of Tourism, says other states average around $14 million. Ballard said she would love to have more money, but the state has other needs that need to be addressed besides tourism. The program was formed in 1981 by hoteliers wanting to promote tourism more in the state. The Idaho Travel Council members are appointed by the governor for a term of three years. After the three-year appointment, members can renew for an additional three years, making the most time a member can serve on the council six years. Finally this week, we find Deborah Marler, owner of DayGM Sales and Marketing. Marler filed her unemployment insurance tax late by one day. Because of this, Marler received a letter from the Department of Labor that reads in part, quote, because of this history of your delinquency, your account is in jeopardy of having a civil penalty imposed, end quote. Marler's business is now required to pay a 4% fine, which equates to $280. Bob Fick, communication manager for the Department of Labor, said at least 3,200 businesses per year are slapped with a civil penalty. The Department of Labor website says it assesses a penalty of 4% of the tax due, as well as a 25% late fee for the first offense, 50% for the second, and 100% for the third and subsequent offenses. The website continues, quote, repeated late filings is an indication of willfulness, but it is not the only factor used, end quote. The penalties are not without critics, who say the state should be encouraging businesses, not punishing them with fines and penalties, especially for being one day late. Marler has grown her business by 30% despite the rough economic climate and says the state needs to rethink what it's doing. Quote, the department needs to refocus its approach and promote Idaho as a business-friendly state where owners are welcomed and encouraged to expand. End quote. That wraps up this week's weekly update. Thank you for watching.